everyone. Hope you are good and be happy always. Once again, welcome to Shachi's Academy. And today we will discuss the first method of demand forecasting that is survey of bias intention. We have already discussed what is demand forecasting, who should go for demand forecasting, that means which businesses in the market need demand forecasting because it's a very expensive process it requires a lot of time and money then what are the objectives of demand forecasting scope and the steps of demand forecasting before watching this video you need to watch those videos as well otherwise you won't be able to understand this topic nicely so let's take a screenshot and start this topic take a screenshot now according to marketing dictionary what is demand forecasting i'm oh, sorry survey of bias intention has been answered over here that is survey of bias intention is a demand forecasting technique. As the topic tells you survey of bias intention. What are the intentions of the customers? What do they want? What do they plan to do in future? Uh, what are the commodities they want to purchase or plan to purchase in future? These things are answered in survey of bias intention method. That's how its name is bias intention. That means customer's intention. Customers planning, customers demand for future, right? So here, survey of bias intention is a demand forecasting or demand estimation technique in which known purchasers of a product are asked to predict their requirements for a given future period. Okay, so important over here is known purchasers. Who are the known purchasers? Take for example, if you want to do a survey regarding markers, this is a marker. Normally professors, faculties or teachers use markers. You can't ask about markers from any household maid. Okay. Or any uh, women who doesn't know or any men who doesn't know or a shopkeeper etc. So people who use markers can give best uh, information about markers. Or take for example, another example can be camera. Uh, photographers can give you best knowledge about the cameras which are the best cameras. Or drivers of different cars can give you best knowledge about different cars. So, known purchases are people who use that commodity, either use that commodity or they know about that commodity or experts in that commodity. Uh, an example can be about youngsters, like different types of phones, or gadgets, high-end gadgets like PlayStations, etc. are used by youngsters or the funky watches or funky clothes. These surveys can be done with the help of customers like youngsters and they can give you the best answers. So you need to know uh, to whom you have to ask those questions. So survey of bias intention requires that you should know people who are having plan to purchase a commodity or who at least use that commodity or they have knowledge about that commodity, right? So known purchase are people, those people. Of product and of product and service, you know, then predict their requirements, who can predict who can foresee or who can predict, who can estimate their future demand. For example, if you ask me, ma'am, how many markers will you require in future? Uh, or say, for example, uh, next six months. So I can tell you I may require four to five markers because I can refill them and use ink. Uh, I can refill them with ink and use them. So that is my demand estimation for myself. So I can tell you, okay, that the requirements for a given future period. Future period that may be one month two months, six months or not more than one year because the, this method is only used for short term and not for long term demand estimations. Okay, the next definition is it is an investigation used to determine customer interest in a specific product or service. Specific product or service means a product that you are concerned with or a product which you are producing or intend to market in the market or sell in the market or uh, distribute in the market. Suppose I am a producer of cameras. I have a company which is known as uh, for Canon cameras and then I am interested in selling those cameras. So I will be doing survey of the, for those cameras. So that is my product or service, specific product in which I am interested. Okay, then methods used. What are the methods? Number one is direct mail questions. You can prepare a list or schedule of questions just like uh, uh, for how many years you have been using the commodity. Do you know that commodity? Do you like that commodity? What are the shortcomings of that commodity? What are the advantages, disadvantages? And what are the things you would like to change in that commodity? Any blah, blah, blah. All the questions which you need to 
uh, know about your product or service which you are in, which you intend to sell in the market or which you are interested in, then you can uh, put all those questions into that schedule and mail that questionnaire to people who are the customers. Just like for example, if you want to know about certain car, then you can go to the showroom of that car, then you can get the list of customers or the buyers of those cars and then you can do the survey from there. Okay. And for a camera also, just like Canon or Sony, etc. You can go to the showroom of Sony, you can go to the showroom of Canon and then you can get the email IDs or WhatsApp numbers or whatsoever uh, from those shopkeepers. If they can supply you, they will definitely supply you if you are the distributor of Canon. Okay. But if you are a student, they will hesitate in supplying you. Okay. So that also depends on that. Then advantages. Sorry. Then next method is the interview method. You can prepare your questions. Go to some place and ask directly from those uh, people who are interested in buying those commodities. Just like uh, if you go, uh, go to some outlet of some branded clothes. Okay, so you can see there are many customers who are purchasing those commodities. Then from those customers, you can get the right answers. You can directly interview them and elicit answers from them, get your answers from them. Okay, then advantages of this method. See, this method is very much uh, advantageous where you are concerned with short period demand forecasting or estimation. If the period is short, say for example, one month, two months, six months or not more than one year or at, at most one year, then this method is best to be used. Then know the desirability of product or service. This method is very good in knowing the desirability or popularity of any product which you are selling in the market. So if you are a businessman, if you want to know what is the notion of people, what is the notion of uh, general uh, people regarding the commodity, uh, do, they demand, do they intend to demand that commodity, do they like that commodity, the features they like, everything can be answered with the help of this demand forecasting method. Okay, the direct interaction with customers. It helps you to directly interact with customers. You can go and interview them uh, or you can uh, uh, have a telephonic interview with them or you can directly mail those questionnaires to customers. That means you are directly interacting with customers who are using the commodity or who can give the best answers, supply best answers to you. Then helpful in bulk sales. See, if any company is dealing uh, uh, at the level of nation or at international level, they need to go for bulk sales. In that case, you need to use this method because this method gives you a general outlook, an overall view of the whole economy that what is the general notion about your commodity. Do people want your commodity or do they not? Okay, uh, that means uh, you can know a general overview of commodity, how many packets or how many units you would be able to sell in one year to, uh, or in two months, three months or at most one year okay so here it helps you in uh, estimation of demand for bulk sales and not the specific sales particularly then come to the disadvantages uh, uh, this method do have certain disadvantages what are they let's see customers may misread or misjudge their own requirements many times you are not able to uh, elicit correct answers from our brain or we may not know what we are willing to purchase and when we go to the market we change our mind so we are not uh, just definitely sure about certain commodities and we can misread our own um, requirements also that may answer haphazardly just to answer questions many times if someone asks us something in a hurry or in a hassle or we particularly don't think many times and we have hazardly answer that question or that may not be correct though okay then customers may not be able to foresee their own demand many times we are not able to foresee our own demand take for example I, I, we may not use potatoes at home normally but when some festival may come or when some guest comes and he may ask or he may ask something to be made of potatoes that we may suddenly demand potatoes or any other dish or any other commodity we may demand abruptly or all of a sudden so we may not know or we may not be able to foresee our own demand also then we can't supply correct answers then mislead survey what is that many people or many respondents may deliberately give you wrong answers or may not want to reveal their correct answers just 
for fun or may not like the survey or they just want to shun you off so shoo you off then they won't be giving you right answers deliberately mislead you with wrong answers then got confused with four alternatives many times when you have four alternatives in mcqs type of questions or yes or no dichotomous questions we call that dichotomous questions in which you have only two alternatives then yes or no alternative can be like will you purchase or not so in that case a person may normally say no also that you may not get the correct answers or in mcqs also you have four alternatives only or five only there are limited number of alternatives and people may choose one of them and that may for sure and many times may not be the correct answer they may have other opinions about that commodity then uh, may not have money and just bluff many times people may not have money in their pockets they are not planning anything but they may bluff in front of you they may give you wrong information in that case that's a shortcoming so what is the utility of this method for businesses this method can be used for short term this is a very good method if used by good expertise and in combination with other methods thank you so much take care god bless you and keep watching my videos and these videos are uh, posted both in both in both the languages as in hindi and english language i uh, go to the channel and watch for the playlist of hindi if you want to watch this video in hindi all the videos which i make are posted in both the languages hindi and english okay so you need not worry about that and many queries were coming in that's why i have answered this question over here in this video at the end of this uh, okay so don't worry all the videos are present in uh, they are in posted in both the languages take care god bless you